There are three steps to making the chicken biryani. Let's begin with the first one, which is making the chicken. For that, I'm taking some oil in a pan. And I'm going to heat this on moderate flame. Along with this, I'm going to add in some ghee. Once the ghee and oil get moderately hot, I'll be adding in the garam masala. And after that, the peeled potatoes. We let the potatoes cook till they are nice and golden brown. And in the interim, I'm going to start marinating the chicken. For that, I'm going to take some yogurt. Along with ginger garlic paste. Some salt. Some turmeric powder. Red chilli powder. Fried onions. And tomatoes. Mix this nicely. This is done and ready. Keep checking on the potatoes. Chicken goes in. Give it a nice mix. Once this is seared and ready, I'm going to add in a little bit of water. Give it a stir. I'm now going to cover this and cook it on medium flame till it's done. I'm going to move this to the flame right next here. And in the interim, let's start making the rice. For which I'm going to take some ghee in a pan along with a little bit of oil. Once the oil heats up, I'm going to add in some garam masala. I'm going to lower the flame and add in water. I'm going to add in some salt. I'll wait for the water to come to a roll boil in the interim. What I've done here is, I have washed and soaked long grain basmati rice. I've just soaked it for somewhere around 15 to 20 minutes and that's more than enough time required to soak the rice. The water has come to roll boil. I'm adding in the rice very carefully. Give it a light stir and continue cooking this on high flame. Let's check for the doneness of the rice. Well, it's almost 3 fourths done. Time is now to put the flame off. I'm going to drain this rice. So I've got a colander right here in which I'm going to drain this. The rice is drained and ready. Let me check for the chicken now. Well, that's almost done. Just giving it a mix. Now that the chicken is almost done, I'm placing in two boiled eggs and after this goes in the drained rice. The trick to a good fluffy biryani is you should not press the rice. Always move the rice like this and make sure it gets nice and even. On goes the lid and you can place this on high flame for exactly 8 minutes and then on low flame for 2 minutes and that's when a beautiful biryani will get ready. Let's check if the biryani is done. Yeah, you have it, ready. Off goes the flame. Now let's begin the plating. Finally, I'm going to garnish this with some fried onions along with fresh mint and fresh coriander. Well, today is a very different biryani, which is a Haryali Murg biryani or a Haryali chicken biryani, which is my take on a biryani, of course. Now, this is a recipe that I make in my homes, of course, for my family, but I thought I'll just 
show it to the world and leech the secret out. A Haryali chicken biryani, trust me, is very simple. Few things that we of course need to take care of. Let's first begin with rice. It's as simple as adding basmati rice or long grain rice to boiling water. This is of course salted water. Generally, for every liter of water, I add in somewhere around a tablespoonful of salt. Now, because it's a Haryali chicken biryani, I'm adding in few green chilies. And along with this, I'm adding in half the quantity of fried onions. Along with this, finally, I'm adding in a bay leaf. Allow this to boil, of course, roll boil, at least seven minutes on high flame, so the rice kind of becomes three-fourth cooked. Let's wait for that. The rice has been bubbling away for literally seven to eight minutes and it's three-fourth cooked. Let's transfer this in a colander. Very carefully, without of course breaking the grains of rice. Well, generally the proportion of rice to meat is always 50%. For example, if you've taken like a kilo of chicken, then you take roughly around 500 grams of rice. Why? Is because the rice when cooked gets doubled. So then the quantity of meat to rice is just the same. Allow this to drain till of course all the water drains out. Let's keep this aside and let's start making the Haryali masala or the green mixture. For that of course, very few basic things. Coriander, washed, dried, cleaned of course. To this I'm adding in mint leaves. Now whenever you're making a pulao or a biryani, never add in mint leaves. Yeah, I know a lot of you add mint leaves either for garnish or in layers, but we need to realize that mint actually darkens, it oxidizes in heat. So we don't want that because it also changes the entire look. It suddenly starts looking brown or black. To this, I'm adding in spinach leaves because of course, I want it nice and green. So these are blanched spinach leaves. I've of course shown this to you time and again, so I'm not going there again. To this, I'm adding in lots and lots of green chilies because of course, we want this spicy. It's murg, it's chicken of course. Chicken is bland generally, so we add in a little more spice so that that kind of just gets balanced. To this, I'm adding in half a spoon of turmeric powder to enhance all the beautiful green color. Lemon juice, ginger and garlic. To this, of course, peeled garlic, scraped ginger. And to this, I'm adding in some cumin seeds. Let's keep a little aside because we'll of course temper it later as well. Let's grind this without water to begin with. You crush it, almost let it get coarse, pasty, and then we add in some water only if required and then grind it further. Let's quickly check for the paste of course. It's looking nice and coarse, but just maybe a tablespoon of water will do the trick and make it absolutely nice and smooth. Well, our Haryali paste is done and ready. A quick check, it looks nice, beautiful, and absolutely wonderful, bright green in color. Let's transfer all of this to the chicken. Well, for this biryani, I'm not using chicken breast. What I'm using is only chicken legs and thigh, because of course, they're my preferred cuts in a chicken. But again, you can use an entire bird, and that's completely personal. And to this, let's start adding in some more ingredients, beginning with yogurt or curds. Let's just whip this slightly. Well, this is also an ingredient which will help in releasing moisture in the chicken. So a little more than normal. Whipped yogurt or whipped curds. To this, I'm adding in some garam masala. And along with this, some more of the fried onions. And that is divided into three parts. The first one, of course, went in cooking the rice. The second one comes here. And the third part will be used while layering this. Let's mix this well. Again, if you notice, I'm not adding salt at this stage because if you add in salt, the meat will start releasing its moisture. And we are not looking at that at this stage at least. Once all of this is mixed well, this of course needs to be kept aside for two hours at least and that is to marinate this wonderfully. It's been two hours, let's move on to cooking the biryani. You can of course take a dek, you can take a dekchi, you can take a deep pot, a flat pot, anything that perfectly works for you. And to this, I'm adding in the oil in which I'd fried the onions. Swirl the oil in the pan 
And to this, let's begin with some spices. The first thing is, of course, cumin seeds. Once these crackle and begin to splutter, I'll add in the other garam masala, beginning with bay leaf, a stick of cinnamon, a few green cardamoms, along with that, a black cardamom, and a few cloves. While this is just kind of beginning to splutter, I'll add in the marinated chicken. Allow this to cook on high flame till the chicken is seared on the outside. The chicken has seared well on the outside. Let's add in salt as required. Of course, remembering the fact that salt has already been added while cooking the rice. A good stir and allow the chicken to cook on medium to low flame for a minimum of 15 minutes or till this is perfectly cooked. It's been 15 minutes and the chicken is almost 3 4 cooked. Let's add in the 3 4 cooked rice. Just ensure that this is pushed and not pressed at any point in time. Finally, a few more things. Milk, swirl it around. And this is all happening on low flame as of now. To this, I'm adding in just a pinch of saffron. A few more things to make it look pretty. Tomato. I'm again, doing it very differently because instead of adding in chopped tomatoes, I'm adding in sliced tomatoes that just makes it look nice and appealing. And this pot can directly go on your dinner table because of course it looks so pretty. Let's start layering this. Finally to this, few more things. This is of course hard boiled egg. And now the remaining fried onions. Let's swirl this around. Do not get tempted to add in anything green at this stage because all of that is going to discolor. Absolutely low flame. Let's cover this and keep it on dumb for five to seven minutes or till the chicken is perfectly cooked. Our dumb cooking is done. With this off goes the flame and we do not need to open this for at least 10 minutes because we want the steam to kind of completely subside and then don't wait for anything. The biryani straight goes on the dinner table. Biryani is one of our favorites, don't you agree? And today I'm going to show you how to make a quick, easy, a delicious and a fragrant Sindhi Biryani. I have 1 kg of chicken over here, which I'm going to marinate with 2 tablespoons of garlic paste, 2 tablespoons of ginger paste, 5 green chilies that I have slit, these green chilies that I have taken are the spicy variety. One cup of yogurt. Here I have a special biryani masala which I have prepared. This whole garam masala, I'm just going to add to this. It's got aloo bukhara, whole spices and bay leaves, chilli powder. Just let's mix this. This garam masala also has two teaspoons of salt. So while we're going to cook this, we're going to adjust the salt later. Three fried onions over here. Just simply take three onions, slice them and fry them. Crisp and golden. Two tomatoes that I have just chopped. Not too fine. And now I'm going to use my hands and I'm going to mix this well, massage the meat and marinate the chicken for at least an hour. The longer you marinate, the better your biryani will taste. So what I'm going to do right now is going to add some freshly chopped coriander leaves, some freshly chopped mint leaves, mix this well.
You know, the aroma of a freshly ground garam masala really is so amazing and it gives your dish such a fabulous taste. Now I'm going to just cover this and keep it in the refrigerator for almost an hour. I marinated this meat for an hour in the refrigerator. Let's heat half a cup of oil. This oil that I'm using here, I'd used it to fry onions. It's the same oil. So once the oil is hot, I'm going to simply add the marinated chicken to it. Here I have three potatoes which I have peeled and chopped and I have soaked it in turmeric water because I wanted a lovely beautiful yellow color to the potatoes. Just mix this well. Let's add a teaspoon of salt. I'm just going to take half a cup of water in this and I'm just going to rinse this vessel so that all the marinade and the spices go into the curry. Just add this. Just give it a final stir. And cover this and cook it on a low flame till the potatoes and the chicken is cooked. I had kept the chicken to cook for almost 30 minutes and I'm sure it is done. The aroma is absolutely delicious. The chicken is cooked really well and so have the potatoes. It's time to layer the biryani. So I'm going to switch off the flame and I'm going to layer the biryani in this vessel of mine. For that, I'm going to first put a layer of oil on this and just spread it. I have 1 kg of basmati rice which I had soaked for an hour and then I had boiled it till it was almost 80% done. We're going to add some of the rice at the bottom. It's going to sprinkle some coriander leaves, some pudina leaves, a few slices of tomatoes, a few slices of lemon, some ginger juliennes. I've soaked some kesar in water. I avoid uh, soaking it in milk because in water I feel the color comes out way better. I'm going to add a little bit. A few drops of rose water. A few drops of kevra water. Some fried onions. And now I'm going to put a layer of the curry. Put a layer of rice on this now. Going to follow the same process. Going to add, going to drizzle some oil, some saffron water, some tomatoes. I have these beautiful green chilies, slightly big in size. They give an amazing aroma to the biryani and a little sweetish taste as well. I'm going to add that. Slices of lemon, some freshly chopped coriander, mint, ginger juliennes, some rose water, some kevra water, some fried onions. And I'm going to cover this with a foil. You can cover it with a cloth as well. Cover this. And I'm going to put a lid on this. And then I'm going to cook it on a dam on a low flame for 20 minutes. We kept the biryani on a dam for 20 minutes. Just let's open this up now. You can see the steam. Wow! Our biryani is ready to be served. It's advisable to just remove the layers from the side rather than putting a spoon in the middle. So just gently pick up the pieces in the rice from the side. And our Sindhi biryani is ready to be served. You saw what a quick and an easy recipe this was. Serve it with a delicious raita.
Well, today's recipe is my take on chicken guntur biryani. Well, this biryani is very special. It's very peculiar because it uses three spices primarily. The first one, of course, is mace. The second one is star anise. And the third one is a very unique spice called Marathi Mogu. Well, Marathi Mogu has got nothing to do with Marathi or with Maharashtra. It is a spice which is fairly used in South Indian food. Most over, Karnatak food and food from the Andhra. Well, I personally know for a fact that Marathi Mogu could be a challenge in terms of sourcing. But let me assure you and tell you, the basic flavor combination of Marathi Mogu is a combination of mustard, black mustard and black pepper. Use a little bit of both, crush that together nice and fresh and add it right towards the end of the biryani and you will reach a little closer even by avoiding the use of Marathi Mogu. So remember that and let's get cracking. Let's begin with heating a pan on high flame and adding in a combination of oil and ghee. We of course need ghee in two to three stages in this recipe. This is the first part of course. When the ghee and oil combination just kind of begins to heat up, we'll start adding in the garam masalas. In this case, Marathi Moggu, star anise, maize, green cardamom, cinnamon, black peppercorns, cloves and royal cumin also known as shahi jeera. With this, I'm also going to add in cashew nuts and sliced onions. To hasten up the cooking process, I'm going to add in salt and mix this well. At this stage, you'll notice three things. The onions have just begun to shrink. Also, they're changing its color. Simultaneously, the cashews are getting toasted and changing to golden brown. The third thing is that the spices are gradually releasing its flavor, which is very important. Once the onions beautifully caramelize, you lower the flame and add in paste of ginger and garlic. And along with this, some powder spices. Beginning with red chili powder, garam masala, coriander powder, herbs like mint, coriander and give this a quick stir. Once the raw flavor of the ginger and garlic goes away, we'll be adding in two more ingredients, sliced tomatoes. along with green chilies. Now that the masala is done and ready, at this point in time, in case you want to make the biryani at a later stage, this masala can be refrigerated. When you begin to make it, you get the masala out, put it on the pot, Add in the rice, add in the water, milk, coconut milk and get cracking right from beginning. This is almost like I said, like a pulao. Quite a misnomer when well, they call this a biryani, but it's a guntur biryani for all we know. So, you may just. Let's add in the pieces of chicken. And on top of this, I'm going to squeeze in some lemon. I'm going to add in some more salt. This time for the chicken. Now remember the earlier measurement was only for the onions to get caramelized. And along with this, I'm going to add in coconut milk, regular milk, and curd. Let's mix this well and allow the chicken to cook. You need to cook the chicken on medium flame for 15 minutes. You can cover it only if you wish to. Let's have a quick check. Stir this well. And if you see the chicken closely, it's just started releasing from its bone. At this stage, after lowering the flame, I'm going to top this up with parboiled rice, which is still warm. Spread this out 
like so without pressing the rice. It needs to breathe literally even while cooking further. The next step is to create a coloring mix. In half a teaspoon of turmeric, I'm going to add in three tablespoons of cold water. Stir this well. Ensure that there are no lumps and this gets added on top of the rice like so. But this will add in a wonderful element of color without bringing in the taste of turmeric. Finally, I'm going to place hard boiled eggs. After placing the eggs, adding in the remaining amount of ghee. Remember, I said we're going to use it in two to three batches. If this happens to be two. You can add some while serving as well. Finally, we're going to cover this and cook this under dam for 15 minutes on low flame. With this off goes the flame. You keep the biryani covered for a little while and that's how it looks now. Now this is ready to serve. So let's see how to make the Muradabadi biryani. Here I have a kilo of chicken which I'm going to marinate with green chilies that I have crushed. These are about 10 green chilies. I'm going to add another 7 to 8 slit green chilies, 3 bay leaves, 3 inches of cinnamon stick, 2 star anise, 1 mace, 2 black cardamoms, 5 green cardamoms, 8 cloves, and about 10 peppercorns. Let's add a heaped tablespoon of ginger paste, a heaped tablespoon of garlic paste, a teaspoon of cumin seeds, a teaspoon of coriander powder, a teaspoon of fennel seed powder, a tablespoon of garam masala powder, a cup of yogurt, and two tomatoes that I have roughly chopped here and some salt to taste. Let's mix this well. Let's keep this aside for at least half an hour while we fry our onions. Let's heat quarter cup of oil. The oil is hot. Let's add five onions sliced and fry them till they're nice golden brown. As you can see, the onions have caramelized beautifully and they've got a beautiful golden color as well. I'm going to add the marinated chicken now. And I'm going to sear the meat for 5 minutes on a high flame. It's smelling absolutely divine and it's looking so colorful. You can see the color of the meat has changed. Let's reduce the flame to a medium. And now cover this and cook for at least 5 to 7 minutes. We've cooked the chicken for 5 minutes. And now we are going to add 750 grams of basmati rice, which I had soaked for almost an hour. I'm going to cover the meat with the rice. One and a half liter of water to this. Stir this slightly. Just gently try and mix all the flavors. We're going to cover this and cook it on a medium flame uh, for about 15 minutes till the rice is just 80% done. Let's take a look at how the biryani is doing after 15 minutes of cooking it. The rice looks almost done. Let's sprinkle half a teaspoon of garam masala. Let's sprinkle a teaspoon of fennel seed powder. 
a tablespoon of ghee let's just drizzle this some saffron water a tablespoon of kevra water if you do not have kevra water you can use rose water as well let's sprinkle some freshly chopped coriander leaves garnish it with some fried onions and now let's cover this and cook it for another 10 minutes till the rice is completely done it's been 10 minutes we kept the biryani to cook and i'm sure now this moist biryani is ready to be served it's looking absolutely lovely and it's smelling delicious let's remove this in a serving bowl freshly chopped coriander some fried onions and our muradabadi biryani is ready to be served You saw what a quick, easy, and a simple recipe this was.